a lot of Democrats are weighing in, mostly privately, but publicly also, about Biden and whether or not he should drop out. Uh, by the time most of you see this, if I turn this into a YouTube segment, there's probably going to be even more Democrats weighing in. Um, but one thing that has been interesting to me that I didn't get to address in the videos uh, on Biden that I did is Bernie 2020. So he's back. Um, and it's specifically because of a comment that Biden made. So if you listen to Biden's phone call interview with Morning Joe, he basically tried to pretend like he was against the elites. He railed against the elites, which is so ironic for him, of all people to say, because he is the president because the elites rallied around him, right? He he got everyone to drop out and endorse him. Like Democratic Party elites like Barack Obama saw that he was the one Democrat that had a chance against Bernie Sanders after he landslided Nevada in 2020. And so Obama made calls for him. The elites in the media. They were doing everything they could to drive home this point that Biden was electable. Biden was electable. But now the elites are actually being honest. It's long overdue, but they're being honest about Biden and the fact that he is not, not very electable. And so people are pointing that out. Um, and it's it's really interesting. They're kind of saying the quiet part loud. So here's Chuck Roca. He was actually so he runs a super PAC now, I think, or, or a consulting firm. Um, but. He was part of Bernie's 2020 campaign. And listen to what he says. I also say something that that's yeah. very, I wouldn't say it's funny. I would say this very interesting. Yeah. It's the same elites that he talks about in my party were the same elites in 2020, I mean, sorry, in 2016 in the presidential primary that said everybody had to come together behind him to beat Bernie Sanders when they demanded everybody drop out yeah. so that he could be the only person to beat Donald Trump. So I think it's ironic that he's telling people now, those same people yeah. that said we have to be with Joe Biden, that they could challenge him at the convention. So say something. Yeah, I just said all that. But yeah, he's absolutely correct. And to be fair, I watched this clip earlier, so I was probably just parroting what he said. But I mean, the points are, are points that a lot of us have already made, right? Joe Biden doesn't get to complain about the elites because he is the quintessential elite. The donor class love him. Remember the article from uh, 2019, I believe, where Bernie was trying to rally uh, based on Medicare for all. That was like one of his signature issues. And there's an article from Vox talking about how the healthcare industry, they're uh, hoping that Biden is like their last defense against Medicare for all. So this dude is a uh, he is an elite. So for him to say that is ridiculous. Now, what's crazy is you have uh, Adam Smith. This is a centrist Democrat. This is somebody who is not a fan of Bernie. But the things that he admits here is so wild to me. None of this is surprising if you're a Bernie Sanders supporter. But still, just hearing them say it is so funny. I got to make one other point. Yeah. So the president talked today about how now it's all the elites yeah. who are trying to force him out. Right. Let's remember what happened in 2020. OK, the president did not run a great primary campaign. He lost badly in Iowa, New Hampshire and Nevada. He came out of Nevada and Bernie Sanders looked like the presumptive nominee in this exact same group of people. The elites. That the president is now deriding as elites. And by the way, they're not. They're right. Democrats. OK, their party operatives, their donors, their volunteers decided and to all the Bernie supporters out there, I'm not judging this positively or negatively. They decided they didn't want Bernie Sanders to be the nominee. They decided that Joe Biden would be the better nominee and credit again to the president. He decided that because he did eight years as vice president. He did the years in the Senate. He had the record to be a strong president. And so they, through their support behind Joe Biden yeah. and Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren and Mike Bloomberg and Amy Klobuchar, and I may be forgetting a few others, stepped aside right. for the candidate who was better. This myth that somehow Joe Biden came in and rescued us, it has been a nationwide movement since Donald Trump was elected president. And in 2020, that nationwide movement said, Joe, you're the best guy, let's go. Right now, they don't think he is. Okay, a bit of a correction. Elizabeth Warren did not step aside. That was also deliberate because Elizabeth Warren was splitting the progressive vote. So there's a reason why Obama made some calls to Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, but not Elizabeth Warren. It's because her remaining in the race was essential to make sure Biden was able to at least reach a plurality and beat Bernie Sanders because she was pulling more votes from Bernie Sanders, if I'm remembering correctly, than anyone else. Um, and even though she embarrassed herself and came in third in her own home state of Massachusetts, what she did served the very important purpose of defeating Bernie Sanders.
So, um, yeah. And to be clear, it was the elites that defeated Bernie Sanders in 2020. It was Democratic Party leaders uh, that kind of organized and made sure he didn't win. Now, prior to Bloody Monday or Bloody Tuesday, um, there were talks openly on national television about if Bernie Sanders gets the most pledged delegates, they were going to contest the convention and just take the nomination away from him. And there was even that moment during the debate where the candidates were asked, will you support the nominee with the most pledged delegates? And the only one who said yes was Bernie Sanders. In other words, everybody was going to challenge the results, contest the election um, if it was Bernie Sanders. Now, there's another clip also from uh, Adam Smith where he kind of says the same thing. Joe Biden was not picked in 2020 because he was the only person that could beat Trump. He was picked because he was the only person that could beat Bernie Sanders, rightly or wrongly. And by the way, for the Sanders fans out there, I'm not judging. (laughs) But that conclusion was made, okay? Oh my gosh, coming out of Nevada, Bernie Sanders is going to be the nominee. And people, just like they are now, back then said, yeah, I don't think that's going to work. So they were looking for an alternative. And tip of the hat to Joe Biden, he had the record. Eight great years as vice president. And I've said this over and over again. Okay, he's kind of repeating what he said. But yeah, he's saying Joe Biden was picked because he was the one person that stood between Bernie Sanders and the Democratic Party nomination. What he's saying is correct. Now, this isn't me crying over spilled milk because that ship has sailed. Um, But here's why I think this is so interesting. The Democratic Party, one of the main arguments against replacing Biden is, well, there was already a primary and 14 million Democratic Party voters. They selected uh, Joe Biden. Now, listen, that was not a real primary. States like Florida and other states straight up just canceled their primary. Ballot access was uh, not given to his uh his uh um opponents now that's not necessarily uh out of the norm with regard to democratic party primaries of incumbents but that doesn't make it okay so voters really didn't get a chance to make their voices heard and to the extent that they did there was a significant portion of the democratic party's base that voted uncommitted against biden saying we're not happy with this guy he's doing a genocide so i say all this to say that when Democrats say, oh, if Biden steps down, then we're going against democracy. Shut the fuck up. It's disingenuous because you all don't actually believe in that. You were willing to steal the nomination away from Bernie Sanders, if need be, in 2020 if he won. So don't give me this bullshit. Now, what I will say is that I don't support uh, the situation where, you know, if Biden doesn't drop out, the uh, pledged delegates become unpledged and they just give the nomination to someone else. I don't support that. And uh, credit to Kyle Kalinske, he made this point, which I agreed with instinctively um, even before he brought it up. But like, I don't want to create this precedent where if you don't like the nominee, you could just steal the nomination away from him. Because if you ever get a good leftist who wins the Democratic Party nomination, you don't want the party to think that we're okay with them just taking it. If, you know, uh, they don't agree. So I don't agree with that. I think that the only way to get Joe Biden out is to try to pressure him to drop out. Um, And the way you do that is the same way you got Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar to drop out. It's got to be Obama. Make the call. You know, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer. You know, we're moving in that direction. Chuck Schumer is telling donors, according to Axios, even though he denies it, that uh, he's okay with a different nomination. So I don't I don't support just stealing or in taking the nomination away from Joe Biden, because even though the primary itself was not robust, it wasn't fair, 14 million votes, that's, you know, that's still important. I don't think that you can just disregard that. Um, but it is interesting that, you know, a lot of the same people who were talking about democracy and how important it is, uh, or who are talking about that now, I should say, you know, they were singing a different tune back in uh, back in 2020. And it's, it's, it's interesting that Adam Smith, of all people, is bringing this up. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Tree, tree, tree. 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 They not like us. Tree. Tree. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Tree. 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 Tree.